Hello there, in today's video and the last of 2020, we're going to remind ourselves of some of the basics. And this is not a tutorial. We're not going dry and stale with talk of f-stops and focal points, no. Whether you're a seasoned shooter or you've just got your first camera for Christmas, I want us to remind ourselves of why we do this, how we can keep improving and carry a solid slice of inspiration into 2021 in defiance of the tough times we are facing. Come with me. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Lexar. If you need a fast, reliable, high quality SD card, then check out the Lexar Professional 2000X SD card. Right, let's start off by very briefly talking about gear because it is the essential, isn't it? And uh, I've had a couple of gear issues recently. I told you the other week about what I now think is the perfect vlogging camera with the Sony ZV-1. Now, that camera has lasted me about two weeks and then it's broken. <laughs> Frustrating to say the least because I went out the other day and filmed a vlog with my good friend, really nice vlog, and I lost the footage because the sound was broken. And essentially what happened is I think I probably dropped it at some point and when the mi microphone was in the microphone port, it must have landed on it and it's cracked the inside of the microphone port. So it totally my fault, but I didn't realize it until after the day was finished. So the sound was ruined all the way through the day. So I'm gonna show you that vlog by condensing 15 minutes down to one minute at the end of this video. And it's some, it's really nice. So I think you should hang around to see that at the end. But we talk about gear a lot in photography. It's often the first conversation that comes up and a lot of people say that gear doesn't matter. And I would agree with that to some extent, but it kind of does as well. More recently, I have been shooting with the Fujifilm GFX100, which seems to have upset a lot of people for some reason. In a way, it really doesn't matter what you're shooting with because a lot of cameras, nearly all cameras these days, don't wanna drop the GFX100 on the floor. If you have the ability to watch this video, it's more than likely that you're going to have a phone that you'll be able to get going taking pictures with. I've done videos about that before and it's surprise, it works surprisingly well and you can make nice prints from it as well. But being a photographer is a journey. We might start to progress and as you go along, you recognize new problems or issues or things that you want to do that your current gear won't allow you to do. So that's where we're gonna start thinking about upgrading. And for me, as a professional, the number one thing that's important to me is reliability. I just need it to work. I used to love tinkering with gear and stuff. I really loved it, it was partly, partly my hobby really. But since doing this professionally, I just need stuff to work because I'm trying to pump this content out all by myself most of the time. And it's tough, so I just need things to work. And the Sony was a good example of that because reliability and that robustness does cost money uh, and I fell foul of that but it was my fault but what I've done now to try and get round that is to add some extra gear to it so I've got it in this cage I've now got this handle on there which actually makes it nicer for filming as well but it's also protecting that microphone port if it falls again so that's how I've got around that by adding additional and cheap things to it to make it into a bit more of a pro setup. Hopefully, we'll see how we get on. It's also why I'm now interested in the medium format because the big resolution, the big pixels are give you the ability to produce these really big prints but maintaining really fine detail so you can look at it close up. Now, is that for everybody? No, of course it's not. It's just simply about getting the gear that's right for you and doing your research and understanding exactly what you need and what you want. Let a little bit of desire creep in, like I said a couple of weeks ago. Again, getting back to basics, in photography, we often have the debate between, is it a technical skill or is it an art? Now, my mum has been writing my biography that's gonna be going on my website, if I thought, well, if I'm gonna get someone to write it, why not my mum? Because she'll probably big me up more than anybody else. But I just, she wrote or sort of happened across an idea that is something I've probably talked about before, but I thought I would share it with you because it covers this technical versus the art quite nicely. And she said, 
Adam's interest in the art of photography became a perfect partner to his love of technology. And during his early adult life, he combined the two into an understanding of how the subject, the camera, and the growing opportunities provided by digital technology can work together to capture a moment in time and tell a powerful story. Now, I thought that's quite nice because it is most definitely a marriage of the artistic and the technical. It always has been, ever since we shot film. It was, there was still the technology behind all that, allowing us to capture these moments in time. I think the basic here is to remember why we first picked up the camera. And I can guarantee with almost all of you is that there was an artistic intention there to tell a story, to show something with what you were putting inside of the frame. The problem is, is that as we start getting into photography and thinking about cameras and all that kind of thing, the technical side seems to take over, particularly with online photography education or when you look at magazines, it's all very heavily technical focused. And whilst I think that the technical aspects are really important, we need to sort of understand that and master it essentially, but I think we can do that at the same time as learning the artistic side of things. It's why this YouTube channel has changed a little bit over the last couple of years. There's basically no straight up tutorials on this channel anymore because I wanted this YouTube channel to be about the journey, about the experience of doing photography, talking about the philosophy of photography and some ideas around the artistic side of things and having adventures and all that kind of thing. And uh, that's what I wanted this YouTube channel to be. If you want to learn photography from me with all the detailed technical stuff, that's why I started The Raw Room. So you can go ahead, get a seven day free trial to that and check it out. Like I say, we do need to learn the technical aspects though, but the thing is, is that it's finite. And if we continually talk about it, it can get a little bit boring. But once you've got those technical skills nailed down, you know how to use your camera, you understand where to focus, then that leaves us then free to uh, explore our artistic side, that infinite side where we can go and do absolutely anything. And Yes, there, there aren't a hundred million different scenes to shoot, but it's all about us. It's about our story, about our interpretation of the scene in front of us and thinking about how you're going to craft your image to portray something about you or about the scene or about how you feel about the scene. And that I think is what makes great landscape photography. One little interesting thing on this though is where we talk about compositional rules. I don't think we should forget them because they do work and they do give us guidelines essentially about how to craft a nice frame. And I think the compositional rules like the rule of thirds or the golden ratio or the golden triangle, things like that, I think that they fall somewhere in the middle of the technical and the artistic because they, they are sort of theories that we might want to learn, which becomes a bit more technical, but then we can use them and as a guide to drive the artistic side. So I think compositional rules are something that we shouldn't forget. Just because they get talked about a lot doesn't mean they're wrong and doesn't mean that we should now and again follow them. If you, if you want to break the rules once you've learned them, I think that's good. We shouldn't be cutting corners without understanding what the corner is that we're cutting. Okay, with this one, I'm kind of mixing a few things into one because I want to start by talking about workflow. It's undoubtedly one of the most important things to hone and develop as we get better and better at photography. With When I run workshops, I, that's the thing I see people struggling with. Get your own workflow going, whether that's putting the tripod down first, then the camera on top, or you have a good look around first. Whatever works for you, do that, but try and do it the same every time, like you would when you drive a car, because that then frees your mind away from that technical setup to capturing what's in front of you. And it works really well. But I've been thinking about flow generally recently, because I think if we get that workflow in the field correct, we can then tap in 
to the sort of flow of nature. It might sound, I don't know how it sounds, but it's something I've been thinking about is there's generally flow in nature. There's waterfalls coming down a mountain or the wind and the sound of the birds and the animals and all those things that make us feel good about being outside. And if we can tap into that, then even then get ourselves into that kind of flow state that we hear about sports people getting into and that kind of thing where you are engaged in this activity with total concentration, total enjoyment, and you're actually half decent at it, we can get into that flow state and it gives us that absolute sense of fulfillment. And I like, I just like the idea of getting into that stage whilst tapping in to the flow of what's going on around us as well. And I think it gives us that ability to not only enjoy what we're doing more and more and more out in the field, but also then coming away with a really nice picture because we've felt exactly what's going on around us. Don't get me wrong though, that doesn't happen to me all the time, but it's those moments when we're out in the field and I feel present in the moment. It's a bit like a meditation and it reminds me of how much I love nature. And I think if you do, and I'm sure that we all do, I'm starting to feel a sense of responsibility and want to do something to assist with conservation. Now, I absolutely hate it, though, when people tell me what I should and should not be doing. So I'm not going to do that at all because it's very frustrating, isn't it? But what I am doing personally is trying to get as educated as I possibly can around all these environmental issues. I've also been looking at my own behaviour and trying to strike the best balance I possibly can. And it's why a little while ago I've decided that I'm no longer going to share locations. And this was not an easy decision to make because I know finding locations for landscape photographers is very, very important, particularly as you're starting out. It's purely a numbers game because hundreds of thousands of people have watched the videos on this channel. And let's just say that one in 100 people is that nerd who rolls up to a location that I've, that they've discovered from watching one of my videos and they drop litter, they light fires, they trample all over a delicate environment. When you look at the figures and that's thousands of people potentially rolling up on these locations and I don't want to be responsible for that. If you recognize the location on a video, please don't type it in the comments because if you do, you'll find that it disappears anyway. But aside from that, a love of nature is an absolute must. It's an absolute basic for landscape photographers, isn't it? And just, I love it. I love being outside and being present in that environment. You see it with hikers as they're sort of scrambling around. I just love being still and calm and taking that moment to breathe it in. And for me, that's a big part of what it's all about. As you know, this video is sponsored by Lexar. Now I've been using Lexar cards for many, many years and they've recorded pretty much every video I have made on this channel over the last five years. And they've never once let me down, even when I drowned one. Now though, with these modern cameras that shoot beautiful 10-bit 4K footage, or they do an insane burst rate for stills, we need a fast card that's going to empty out the buffer of our cameras. That's where the Lexar Professional 2000X SD card comes in. It's fast with 300 megabytes per second read speed, 260 megabytes per second write speed. It's high quality, it's reliable, and it comes in a variety of sizes to match your needs and your budget up to 128 gigabytes. So give Lexar some love for sponsoring this channel. Hit the link down below and check out the Lexar Professional 2000X SD card. Now, another absolute basic of photography is to ignore the haters. And there are, unfortunately, quite a few of them around. And landscape photography is no different. And that's where the jealousy and the, the hatred seems to creep in. And we're, we're living through this pandemic at the moment. And I've just seen a noticeable increase in the amount of, like, silly and hurtful uh, and hateful comments. It really seems that the negativity is getting the better of some people. I'll give you an example. Like I said, I've been using this Fujifilm GFX 100 and it, Fuji haven't sponsored me. And it's not an advert for this camera. It's, it's got this, now I've got this 400 megapixel uh, pixel shift mode that I was just really intrigued to learn about. And I thought a lot of you would be as well, because it is quite incredible. 
so I got in touch with Fuji and asked if I could borrow one and they sent it to me. One person even said about it, and I've written this down, uh, so I'll read it to you. One person said, useless. Us normal people cannot afford a hundred million medium format camera. Don't know what that means. So what's the point of showing us what it can do if we can never replicate it? Is replicating what I do what you're trying to do? I don't think so. This is, <laughs> this is the best bit. This is a stupid, senseless video. Now, the video I was actually talking about how maybe we should, when we're in the field, think about making a print. It didn't really have anything to do with the camera, but there we go. Sadly though, this situation is not just affecting me. I know it affects a lot of you when you share and post images and at camera clubs and things like that, but we've even got to the stage where my fellow landscape photographer, Thomas Heaton, was threatened by someone in his local area to the point where the police had to be called and it's just not on. This makes me so angry when someone is just doing their best to create good content and good videos and good pictures. They don't deserve that kind of treatment and it's just, it's wrong and it needs to stop. A very easy mantra to live by is that if you wouldn't say it to someone's face, don't say it online either. It's pretty clear that as your audience grows and people perceive you as being more successful, that the amount of negativity and hatred towards you is going to increase as well. It's just seemed to be, unfortunately, the case. But let's not finish on that. Let's leave you with a positive, inspiring feeling about your landscape photography and about going into 2021. So let's go into the next chapter and I will share that vlog from a 15 minute bit that I mucked up down to one minute thing that I think is quite nice. We are born with an ingrained sense of curiosity and wonder and doing landscape photography helps us to rediscover this. It's the same feeling our ancestors must have had as they wondered what was over the next mountain or round the next corner of the river. It's exciting as we explore, hone our craft and share our passion and artistic ideas. 2020 has been a difficult time for everyone, but at the heart of any adventure story is the challenge that we must overcome. Hope is the light in the dark, and we can choose to come out the other side of this transformational experience, stronger and more together if we are kind. I want to be on the offensive, driving forward, being positive and surrounding myself with people who want to do the same. It gives me the strength to fight and keep going. Being a landscape photographer is not just about taking a pretty picture, it's about the adventure, our journey, making a connection to nature and boosting our mental and physical health. It's about rediscovering our curiosity, slowing down and finding a meaning to life that is repeatedly rewarding. It's about increasing our levels of self-awareness as we journey alone or forging friendships that will last a lifetime. Whether we can fly to faraway places or have to walk from our door, we can be grateful. Grateful for the beauty that nature provides, the opportunity to share it with others, and the understanding that we are creating moments that we'll remember forever. <laughs>